Anna and Maria, I won't ask you much about your game today because it was quite a short game. But I think people will be more interested in your adventures coming here. Um, what did you do during lockdown? How, and how has it affected your life? It was a very hard period for um, women's chess players, first of all. As for me, I played only four online events, but of course online events can't be considered so serious as over the board. So uh, during the lockdown time, I just try uh, to spend more time on things that I couldn't do in the past <laughs> because of my travels and chess tournaments. Um, in general, uh, um, I think it depends on the character, you know, if the people are extroverts or introverts. And I think that for the chess players, it was not so hard to uh, stay at home and uh, uh, to do what we usually do. But even for me, I have to say that it was too much. It was a very long period and just a whole year. Uh, I think it was too much, yeah. <laughs> Did you get any new hobbies or pastimes during the time? Uh, Learn a musical instrument or...? I wouldn't cool say music. that my life has changed in this way, um, but uh, uh, I tried uh, to learn French a bit, yeah, and I got lots of, lots, lots of time for it. Uh, and uh, also I got much better in cooking. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an see? expert, of course, but... <laughs> Did you get to see each other during lockdown? Were you able to visit each other? But we lived together. Oh, you lived together. Yeah, it's okay. the same apartment. Not so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw each other every day. <laughs> okay, so when was the last time you played over the board chess? Oh, it was exactly a year and two months ago. So it was a Grand Prix in Lausanne. Does it feel unfamiliar playing over the board chess again? Um, today I was looking on the board and uh, I tried to recall the whole atmosphere. I think it's not so difficult to get back to playing chess. Maybe playing your sister is a good way to start, yes? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Did you watch the Queen's Gambit Netflix series? Yeah, of course. I think uh, all the chess players uh, watched this movie. Yeah? And what did you think of it? Well, first of all, I'm very glad that uh, there are so many um, positive feedbacks because it's very important. Uh, as, uh, as far as I know, the, all the previous movies that were about chess, they um, didn't have uh, so many uh, good feedbacks uh, or, or only, only a few of them. So uh, also I like the... Um, the way that uh, the actors tried uh, to, um, uh, how to say, Transmitted. to transmit, yeah, the way of playing chess. Because I know that it's very hard for uh, the people to, who, who, does it, who don't play chess to transmit uh, how we do it uh, at the tournament. Did you get any media interest in, in, in your home country? Oh, yes. This. Yeah, we've got several interviews and so people were interested more in chess. Uh, so it's great. Yeah. And do you think the Beth Harmon effect will be good for the chess world and particularly for the women's chess? Oh, you mean this movie? The, the effect of the, what I call the yeah. Beth Harmon effect. Is it good for chess? I think yes, because it, um, it popular, popularizes chess uh, in, in a good way. Right. What do you think, Anna? What did you think of uh, Queen's Gambit? Yeah, obviously I have watched it and uh, yeah, I think this positive uh, impact uh, will uh, help chess to become more popular. It has already helped a lot because more people started to be interested in chess, especially uh, girls, because uh, they kind of saw the example. Uh, but uh, many people, what I realized, they didn't understand that it was not a real story. They thought it was a real story and uh, yeah, they were <laughs> more amazed. But uh, well, anyway, I think uh, it brought uh, uh, more of pluses than uh, disadvantages because yeah this movie you know uh, it's not so easy and it's not for everyone and if children watch it uh, then they may uh, interpret it in a wrong way and uh, get only the 
let's say, not so good things uh, from there. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think, uh, I think it has helped jazz a lot. Was there anything in it that made you laugh or you thought it was ridiculous? For example, Beth Harmon learns to play chess and then within a couple of days she's giving simultaneous displays. Did you think that was funny? Uh, well, you know, it's different when the chess player is watching it and uh, watching it from, uh, yeah, from the perspective of being a chess player and watching it from if it's someone who don't play chess. So, of course, we understand that the story is not real and it's impossible to master chess in a way that, like she did in the movie. So you have to work hard and uh, yeah, you can't live the way she lived <laughs> in order to be... Taking drugs and all these things yeah, that she was doing. Yeah, taking drugs and uh, many other things. Uh, but... Uh, Okay, yeah, some of the things were funny, like uh, also the moments when uh, like, uh, when she won the tournament and then everybody started to congratulate her and to praise her result. Usually that do don't happen, yeah, especially when women is uh, winning some men's event, some big event. Uh, but okay, uh, like for, uh, for for me, the most funny thing was when uh, how she was playing because actually how she was acting during the play it was uh, quite real, yeah, how she was thinking. But the funny thing was uh, when she was sometimes she was recording the movie uh, the moves and sometimes she didn't. <laughs> and also when uh, she played with the uh, black color, sometimes the clock was for the left hand and usually they don't happen during the tournament. Usually when you're playing with black pieces, you have the clock. Uh, next to your right hand. Uh, but okay, these are the details. I think uh, the most important things were uh, transmitted uh, like uh, correctly. How about travel? Travel after COVID, travel after lockdown. Did you have any adventures getting here? Did you roll to this year? Oh, we had huge advantages. <laughs> huge adventures. Uh, well, basically, like every step uh, you take, it's not clear if you will make it an, or not. And of course, it's unpleasant uh, because we started thinking about our journey maybe uh, one month before the event. And that's what we usually don't do. And that's very tiring because like literally every day you just keep on checking the rules which are changing and you are afraid to miss some news, something important, and you want to do everything on time. And uh, that, of course, distracts you from the main thing from uh, preparing for the event, right? And uh, yeah, some players were in better conditions, some players were in worse conditions, like players from European Union, for them it's obviously easier to come here. Uh, but uh, we didn't have a choice and I'm glad that uh, finally all the players made, <laughs> finally all the players got to Gibraltar, uh, Valentina Gunina arrived just a few hours before the first game. And uh, yeah, that usually don't happen, but uh, well, what to do? Sometimes it's difficult to say what's right, what's wrong. We could wait another few years and then uh, let's say, hopefully, maybe it would be possible to, you know, uh, host the tournament without all these traveling issues. But right now it was, uh, it was like it was. Unfortunately, Hampi couldn't make it and some Chinese players. And that's, of course, um, well, that's, uh, I would say, not right, but uh, because they had the right to participate here. But it is like it is. Uh, the tournament has started and it's already good. We were joking a little bit like how many players would manage to make it and uh, all the players uh, like the which were uh, who were finalized they managed to come here. So uh, yeah we started let's hope the best one will win. Absolutely. Thank you very much Anna and Maria. Thank, Thank you. you.